Okay, our next agenda item, discussion of HB 710 and possible changes required by TCF. Do you want to okay. give us a uh, good word? Yeah. <laughs> this is a lot of fun around the state. Right? Yeah. Because nobody really knows what they're talking about. Right? So, um, understand that when it comes to law and laws being issued out, if it's a new law or new entries, like we're talking about the uh, library protection area, until <clears throat> somebody has been sued and the courts interpret how what they're actually talking about, right? We're not sure. Now, I have sat in on parts of Nampa City's and Boise City's meetings when they're going through it. And it seems like people are trying to run to the U.S. Supreme Court and get definitions and put it to our definitions and come up with where they're going to go from there. But it's, uh, that's a lot for us to be doing right now and trying to interpret it. So I've broken it down to, first of all, let's take a look at the law. If you don't have a copy of 710, but I'm sure you all do it in your own <clears throat> And ours is actually 18-1517B. It's now been adopted and is under the books to become effective on 1 July. And all the legal uh, research areas that we as lawyers use if we're not reading books uh, has already updated to that and telling people about it. And that's the library uh, section which actually incorporates what you're looking at as the Library Protection Act. Let me just go back to my the Children's School and Library Protection Act. And if you're looking for it, it's not 18 15 17. It also make sure you put the B section on it so it, they slipped it in the middle of it. All that. And what's unique right off the bat? What's really unique about it is it's in Title 18. That's all criminal statute. Okay. So is it. It's a violation criminal. Well, it doesn't say it's criminal, but it put it in there like that. And so you have to wonder, and we were just having a discussion before the meeting started just a little bit, uh, is if it's criminal, then is there going somebody going to be charged with the criminal sanction? Because how do you charge an entity with the criminal sanction? More you go. Uh, if it's a civil and they're coming after it, are we talking about damage to a person? If it's damage to a person, then it would come under torts. Well, the, now the law has already changed right before it got signed because it went from 30 days for you to take corrective action to go to 60 days. But if you come into the Tort Claims Act, that's 180 days to make your notice that you have a complaint about it where you're gonna go. So there are some areas to look at and see. I think some of the big libraries down south with, with uh, their Block and maybe chopping it a bit to be super, mm -hmm. but I prefer that we stay out of that. And let's, let's talk about how we can all be happy, okay? <laughs> so I met with Andrew Kerr, the prosecuting attorney. We've met twice on this matter. Lee and I have talked about it. The director and I have talked about it. And let's start with what's the first thing we're doing now. Uh, to bring out, so we're talking harmful to minors and exposure to minors is that walking through the library and they just have to look over right and left and that's exposure and then but then let's narrow it down okay the elements of, of a claim are you have to have material that's out there you know it's out there and you made it available what's making it available then who can complain well, the only people that can make the claim against you are the child the parent or legal guardian Okay, so those, those have, it's not somebody just running in off the street and say, you know, the place is on fire and everybody runs out. Uh, <clears throat> pictures, any minor who obtains material that's the parents and guardians. Again, it goes to the three, any minor parent or guardian who prevail in an action. It doesn't say in the law, it says if you claim it, uh, let me get back over here. If you claim it, you've got time to get it off. You don't, they have a cause of action. But it implies that there's, a, there's an investigation that takes place. Well, I've got some great ideas to talk over with the staff on some issues on how to report and give a guideline if the board's going to take an investigation and whether they see it viable or not. But I'm not prepared to say that that's what you should, you should do. And I talked to the prosecutor and said, what are you looking at right now? In my opinion, the place you start when there's a new law, 
that could hold us accountable or give rights to the people coming in as opposed to the law. And it should be a big area with signs in, in H4 that says this is the new Idaho law. So everybody's getting at least initial education to what it is and let people know that we know it's a law and we take it serious and we're going to take that action and that's where we're working. Now we went over how the library is divided and where different books are and it's taken <clears> care of and it seems that there's a there's a good working relationship there now. Plus, the library over the last couple of years has had to put into to effect how they evaluate what people think are nasty, uh, uh, viol what would be violations of this law, and we're doing that. Um, we should have a form. The law creates what it wants to see in the form, a letter to be available to send for the library to look to make its evaluation. I've looked at few other places that have come up with an idea that I'd like to talk to you I'd like to add to that letter which is to put a guide on the back of the letter they can tear off that says this is how your rights go and this is how you follow them this is the next step and if you don't think it was there so people are feeling like their their complaints are being heard and the board is sympathetic to their cause and then what the result <clears throat> in the final and if there's an appeal process before they go also that helps us if there's to be any sort of litigation because one of the things that happens if people are doing some sort of claim under a law if you have an administrative process to be followed then you can put that off until you say you haven't finished the administrative process we want to evaluate it plus it gives the library the opportunity to put together any claims it has that it's not what you're claiming it is and so you're putting it together in case they do end up in court I, it doesn't say what court's going to hear it, right? Now, jurisdictional courts and magistrates is up to $10,000, or if it's a probate, it can be deal with real property. Everything about that goes up to district court. I guarantee you that if, if it's going to any of the courts at this point. No. And of course, you don't know who's going to be coming in and if it's even going to be a matter to us. Because since this library was proactive in the last couple of years to get a new policy, I believe so far it's working pretty good and I haven't heard any complaints about people saying you guys aren't, you're not doing your job. That's what we want to start. So Anna Kay and I are believe going, if we start with signage and get it out there, let's see how everybody takes to it and where this law is going to lead us. But until we have some case law that comes out, no, we don't know what to now what the defenses are going to be. Now, there are affirmative defenses, and that's important because it's making it sound like it's a civil matter. Affirmative defenses is where we, that uh, if somebody lied to you, they said they're over the age, they so use some false ID, uh, some type of ID that can't be used, or driver, uh, a false driver's license, draft card, birth certificate. I think if we our poli our staff should be advised that if somebody's trying to give ID to get a bad book, uh, they sh it should be a picture ID, which is basically what you're trying to do, so they're not walking somebody else's in. And the other affirmative defense is if somebody comes up and says, "I'm this minor's child uh, legal guardian or parent, and I'm giving them permission," and if you take that, then it's a perfect defense that you were trying to do your job to control it and it got out. Now, but then you have the question of, let's say um, a parent is in the library, the kids grab one off of the shelf, they go over and sit in the chair where their other siblings are, and they're showing it to you how many people you're going to have to fight if you did something wrong. Those are things that need to be discussed and where we're going to go because Right now it's kind of open end. We have a start where we're going to go with that. I think we need for the letter they can make a claim. I've got some additions lead that I'd like to go over with you on. So no real action for the board right now. We have another month to look at it and then come up with the document. The key is, is that everybody understands that both the library staff, the board, and the people, and the people that are coming into the library understand where they are and what their rights are in the community. Now, a couple of libraries down south have said we are only going to entertain those rights for people that have library cards. I don't see that in the statute. I see this thing. But do we limit people who can come into our library by library cards? Mm -hmm. Right. And so 
how would you, their, their, the argument's going to be, wait a minute, how can we protect them, the rest of them to come in as a public library? So I think you're going to see probably some challenges down south. To that. It will. It's a public library for viewing, you know, but, and, but you have to have the corridor or the application to check out. Them. Right, and then it also gives a defense to the library if you have the signs up that say, and we, and we label the areas where people are, and you have the signage up that says, here's the law, then you would also have an, another defense that you could bring up to say, you saw the signs. Why are you letting your kids back there in the first place? Oh, so it brings a little bit of personal responsibility back there, but it gives us another line of protection. That makes sense? Yep. Would a, would a minor be allowed in the library without their parent? I don't see why a minor can't, as long as the sec they know the sections they can and can't go, and I think that's part of the signage that they <coughs> put up. It's an area where it require an adult to say whether you could look at it or not, and you just put all you put a warning sign up that says you must be have an adult, just like the old us at the old gas stations you see from the Playboy's penthouses and all that good stuff. And, so, and I'm sorry, but we, you know, it's one of those where right now it's an unknown world we're right, getting into right. it. I'm just giving advice to try and protect us in every way we can so you guys aren't. So I'm not running over to court and saying, why is the board here? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I can't come to so I guess my question is, um, upstairs in the nonfiction section, um, we would have a sign that says no unescorted minor in this area due to house bill for the law right right and we would we would have a sign that says that in the nonfiction section fiction too the entire and, building right. is closed but to me the nonfiction section is is more uh because the people that have talked to me about this issue have said you know i want my minor child to be safe to go up to the library in the adult section and go through this area because that's what parents are looking for and that's what users of the library are looking for they're looking for access they're looking for their children to have access to the library don't forget christian fiction right so what but what we're saying is because this law the way it's written says that anything that can be deemed as harmful is a violation of the law we're going to have to put that sign all over the upstairs of the library mm -hmm. then are we going to require library staff to enforce that and if if we, if we don't are we in are we following that well, you put the sign up so that helps. That's correct. You've got a sign up there. And I'll bring up a couple other scenarios to you as well. But let's take a look at this one. Yes, if you see a minor walking back in there, uh, I believe by this you'd have authority to walk up and say that I need some ID that you're old enough to be here. Uh, what if you don't see them walk in there and they're standing back there and you don't know? Are you going to be held accountable? It says, no, you're voluntarily taking and making it available. Well, you we're not. We're putting the signs up said you're not supposed to be back here. And you're saying if you're not 18 or have the, the parent with you, you're not supposed to be back here. Standard thing, you're just protecting yourself. What if they say, I have a note from my parent that says I can be back here? Well, the law says you're supposed to be personally escorted or have your parent there. If, if the parent if the parent is if or can a parent be escorting their child uh, on one floor and the child's at the other floor I think in that situation you should have the parent check in get the name of the child and say we're in here and I've given their permission to where they, where they can go they are authorized but can the parent bring the child into the adult stacks with them to, to Look at the old staff. I believe that the, the law is saying if they're escorted by them. Uh, as a company at the time of the act by his parent or legal guardian. So they have to be with him. So the parent, my, my uh, so the parent couldn't just sign a waiver for their no, kid? No. As it stands now, yeah. courts come out and change it, which yeah. I'm guaranteeing this is going to be interesting. Right, this seems very 
loosey goosey. It's going to be, and that's why the court's going to have to interpret, and that's what. And they go right back to the statute. They look at the arguments that were held in the legislature, and they try to put the intent of the legislature in the law. But as it stands now, you're you're kind of. Okay. But I'm hoping, and the prosecutor is in agreement. We start where we're going, and and she believes that that's the appropriate start for us. Okay. Questions? This is going to be lots. Of Yes, I mean, so this is, I don't know if you saw my consideration sheet that I wrote up for it. Uh, in it, I said the enforcement mechanism is a $250 reward for individuals who bring a successful lawsuit against an offending institution as well as civil damages. No criminal, criminal penalties are attached to offenders beyond what is already in Idaho law. Right. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. And keep in mind, people say $250, but you get the other part, plus additional civil damage. Plus damage. So they said, well, my, my son's having to go to counseling for the next six months to get all the way. Um, but it is, but it does give us a little narrowing down, looking at three type, types of people that can claim a minor, a parent, and a legal guardian. And then our reconsideration policy seems to, to hit the button. We need to add the text of the Children's School and Library Protection Act to that. Well, and I, I intend to bring it, and, and that's what I was shuffling. But I also here. like, you You talked about the administrative process tear off, right. so we can add that to it also. Like, just give them a bullet list of the steps, check boxes. It shows the intent that we're that. trying to follow the law if there's a claim that we're not, yep. and it allows us to modify something and keep everybody informed as we go forward. Um, um, didn't you also say only patrons can do reconsideration? So does that part have to be changed? Well, um, in our policy, I think, didn't we add that only patrons can do the reconsideration? I, I, I don't know, but I, I would imagine it says that. I think we, I we, don't think we yeah, it was, a, it was a discussion, I remember. Is anybody that comes in a patron? No, you have to be a... To, You've got to get a card, yeah. you got to get a card. And if you don't have a card, I don't think we need to involve you in our reconsideration policy. But you just said that anyone that walks in the door. Well, that's uh, what I'm looking for. Because that's what, and then that was the topic. Right. They're looking down there, and yeah, which popped up to me when my study and their policy is going on. Going, if it's only people that have a have a, <coughs> a library card, but anybody can be in there. So um, anybody should be able. That's to. more than when you're doing the patron, you're more of the checking out. The checking materials. out, of, right? But in being a public library, you're, you know, you're kind of open to viewing from the general public. It's more. Of, who do you? Who do we have the library open for? Open the public. Then this is a public law for free library. So, yeah, and then my final one, okay, pages with minors in their library account will need to sign an additional release of liability, as well as review the appropriate policy changes before their children can check out books after July 1st. Is that accurate? You know, I kind of put that in there that, because we have people with kids on their account, and you were talking about reaching out to each and every one of them. Why, why don't we, have, I mean, we got to do it, everybody will put the signage up. Is there anything that would prohibit us from just putting a letter together with the law and sending it out to everybody has to fight as a patron? But I mean, there are people that currently have kids on their accounts. Right. The, the law has now just changed. And so you know, should we have them, do we, do we need to have them acknowledge that the law has changed and that this now means something different to have a kid on your account. Because a kid on your account can only check out kids' books now, nope, right? No, that's not true. They can't no. even check out If you put your child on your account, you are in essentially saying that I give permission for my child to check out anything in this library. But, and that's how we've always done it. Yeah, but now your child does not have permission to check out any adult book. Right. Under this on the wall, law. Right. Yeah. they no longer have that permission to check it out by themselves. No, I don't there. think that's 
I don't read the law that way. So I see, think what the, the law question. says is much more vague. What it's saying is if your child is allowed to take out a book that they find harmful, that's a breaking of the law. So they're not saying they're not saying every child has can't check out a book from the adult section. They're saying every child can't be hurt by a book. So it's not but if a child comes to the counter with a book from the adult section, then they have broken our policy by going into the adult section to get that book. Unless, Unless they're, they're accompanied by their parent or guardian. Right, but the child but is... Are we carrying it farther than and saying... Assuming the parent guardian, guardian... I know where you're going. Yeah. Huh? Then the parent and guardian should be there when they check out. Exactly, but exactly right. It says to be with them when, it, when they're there. Right. So I think if they're taking anything from adult sex, then they're going to have to have the parent there signing out. Unless it's some sort of unrestricted adult book section, which is, you know, the most difficult classifying job that we could possibly that handle. It's not, it's, it, I mean, that's not doable. Yeah. Yeah. Also, that's completely it's also easier to start um, with a tighter regulation and loosen it as things go on than trying to retighten it as after the fact. And we're loose now. We weren't until this law came out. But right. We're loose now. And I think that what we've got to do is if it says the parent has to be with you, and I believe we've yep. quoted it a couple times, then it should be for the checking out company. Well, that may need to be the. the so that's the thing that's going on with that I see. What's that? So you get the public informed on top of that. Right. So I mean, we have to let everybody with tilt code on their account know that this is now changed, that you're taking yes. it off. I agree. Right. right. So the, the and thing if, I, they, I, if they complain, call their legislature. Well, that, yeah, and that's why, you know, maybe we have to have them sign a, an a additional form that says, I understand and agree that this is now a policy. So I don't the, know if I don't so know I'm know if things on you, Lynn, here. I don't well, know. Just, I don't know if you can go that way because yeah. it's a public law. They're responsible for knowing the law. Well, you can't sign a letter that lets your kid go by beer, and you can't sign a letter that... But I, I guess the thing I would like to say is from the Idaho Commission for the Library, they say, and their little blurb about this is, first remember that libraries and school districts have lost cases where they have removed or restricted materials violating the First Amendment rights of minors and adults. So there's a lot more case law saying that we are being too restrictive than there is that we are being not restrictive. And that's why I said, I said, that you can interpret it one way, but we need the law, we need the courts to look at this law. And we don't want to be in the front of it, but unless you guys are really willing to pay a whole bunch of money to go to court, let's let the big big dogs down there and fight this out because we're following the law. Your hand's not going to cover that case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have been looking to retire. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one case. And right. one, one big case. <laughs> <laughs> one, one big case. <laughs> I've been saying since day one, the publishers need to start putting ratings on the books. Well, and, and but that would be a different a different thing for the legislature. But it would it would relieve some stress from you guys. It does. It puts the library in a tough spot, and that's why I'm saying. We have to start strict because we don't want them bringing everybody into court saying, I'm going to make an example out of you guys. Or somebody just overly zealous. And that's why I said, when it comes to patrons on who can check out, you don't. You can have people just come in and say, you hurt my child. We don't want to be in that position. <clears throat> that's another bill that they're looking at trying to do. You know, so it's like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't understand that. So that's my broad brush right now. I'm going to talk to Lee about later on about then we'll get back to the board with what we recommend adding to the letter but uh, well, we'll look at the we'll look at the reconsideration policy yeah and I do want to uh, do that now and at the same time uh, what we put out should be clearly put forward on your policy page okay we have a you know reconsideration but I think there should be a section saying if you have a complaint or a book or something these are what you want to read so that we can get, we're, we're showing everybody, we want you to know the law so none of us are gonna get in trouble for it. This, I mean, I'm trying to put together a press release right. so that we can get ahead of our next meeting so that people can be aware of what- But I also want you to know that, that the prosecutor and, and I are on the same page for this. So, uh, because the biggest step is information. Yeah. Just get it out. So that, this would be the one of the yeah, things that I'll, I'll go ahead and give this out here. Right. 
you know, on the on the right on the posted on the I'll get on the it. library on the on the library bulletin board or upstairs or I put it I will put one on each floor for the books just so you're covering okay. the people know the wall when they go there because they may not if they see the kids run upstairs they don't know what's going on. Uh, so we want it out. We want people to know. So it'll have to be on the end of the stack space now. Yeah. The front desk or right now. Put it on the front door, door too. Yeah, put it on the front, front door, you put it on the counter. And, and if somebody else. goes over and they have an objection, your clerks up front can just look over and there's a law, you can read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't, I'm not a lawyer, I can't tell you what it is, right. but it's there we put it out. Right, here's his address. But the good news is, is that like they're still battling in a lot of the libraries, the bigger ones, the ones that are allowing a lot of these books. And I think you guys have done some huge improvements over the last, you know, six months. So I don't really foresee a lot of problems. It's just extra Should measures listen taken. To their, the big law firms down there advising the big cities down there, they're preparing for it. Yeah. Uh, and I think, it, well, and I was looking at the Southern Idaho, you know, Boise now, mm -hmm. and, Buffalo, sort of, and they're just, yeah, they're looking forward to this. So. And that's my input, and I'll have more as we go along. Good, but you got to ask me back. Can I ask? <laughs> <laughs> For clarification sake, so essentially what you're saying is that we are no longer allowed to check out to anybody under the age of 18, that a release or a waiver from a parent would not really stand up, or are we saying we are only allowed to check out kids' books to kids who have their Google on there? So essentially you're talking about making the librarians police. Yeah. So well, not in, really. In a position of saying, I'm sorry, I can't check, we're talking yeah. about... Do, we're talking about Christian fiction, we're talking about adult nonfiction. If, if a, a person that you don't believe is 18 and brings a book up from the adult section and you have a question, you have a right to ask for their ID to verify if there's not an accompanying parent or legal guardian. That's your affirmative defense. That was what protects you. Just like in the store if you're buying alcohol. Yeah. Unless when I was growing up. But that was a whole different thing. <laughs> but the and alcohol is out in the broad open. And I don't see the store stressing they, out over it. They don't, except for, because, but they'll have inspectors. And let's get something clear. If the state puts a law like this together, they're going to task somebody to come around and inspect. Maybe not right away, but yeah. they will task it, just like alcohol. And you, each librarian, whether they're willing to take the risk yes. of checking out. So I, I, have, uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, I don't know if you can answer it. Yeah. They, they so can so whole idea. Yeah. Just, if somebody yeah. files a suit to, yeah. or decides that the Boundary County Library has, has done this harm, <coughs> who do they file that suit against? Will it be against the personal individual librarian? Will it be this doesn't say. I believe they'll sue the library and go against the library, but Remember, it's only three types of people that can do it, and you have 60 days to go through the, that administrative process so they can get there. So it, it does put some speed bumps up there to keep them and make it restrictive to do it. Uh, and the question is, like I said, do they go to the police and claim the police to come over and cite the library? That's criminal. Or do they go to and file their own case in magistrate court? We don't know. Or do they have a tort claims act? To put don't don't they have to claim harm and then give it sixty days to move the book and then file? Mm -hmm. yeah. See, see, yeah. see, no. That's if there is a harmful book in a un, in a non restricted section. But I, you you. You don't have to do any of the reconsideration stuff if it's in it. If it's in the adult section, it's an adult book. We've all agreed that it's an adult book, and we've closed that to minors. Yeah. Boy, this is by this closing the adult section, right. we <coughs> own the liability. So basically, of we're talking not, about the, of not checking out a single adult book out of that section that's closed right. to any minor whatsoever. That's, I mean, that's the, that's the line there. I think you guys are stressing. I'm happy 
And if Adrian's happy, you guys are doing great. <laughs> Lynn was a Lynn was one of the best people you hired, or well, you have promoted. She's done wonderful. Adrian is one of ten thousand people in Boundary County, and there are a whole bunch of different ways that people could make this a problem for us. And so we have to completely cover ourselves right. Right. for every possibility for everyone. At least. At least tell the courts to have a look at right. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. With more. And, and so, so this we find we right. have to sit there and do our due diligence. Exactly. And do and take that. You know. Yeah. Because what are judges going to do? They're going to say, well, they and it's, it's the Supremes that are going to give the or the appellate are going to give the, the interpretation. The local judges are going to say, okay, well, it looks to me that they tried. They did everything they, according to the law, they thought they had to do. We don't have the legislature giving us any opinion, and so it's going to open the door for them to say, "Okay, let's let it go." It sounds to me like they're both trying to follow the law. I mean, they, so the classification system currently is adult, young adult, and children, right? Those are the only three classifications that you have when a book comes in. We have a recent adult. Which but, but coming in like with the recommendations, they have sort of a classification mm -hmm. yeah, already, right? Yeah. Are those the three classifications? Basically, yeah. But young, young, adult, uh, young adult is in the adult section, though, right? No, it's downstairs. Young adult is downstairs. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's yeah. <coughs> down there by the oh. CNC or the. Oh, we just moved some of the uh, young adult so downstairs. That's what it was. You know, the reconsideration is only for young adult and children classified yeah. books. Yes. Anything that comes into our library classified as adult, you now have to be 18 in order to check out. Right. You can check it out for your child. Your child cannot check out an adult right. book by themselves without you standing there. So every advantage. Which, by the way, think about this. And, and the important part of them having to stand there and check it out for them if they want it is. If that's our policy, then it prevents somebody from taking a book home, giving it to their child, and taking it back in and say, you know, you, you can show me where I was here to sign it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to come in and I, I know everybody's an honest person. In fact, there are a few people that make up stories. And so, <laughs> Which is why you're still employed. That's right. Oh, <laughs> trust me, there's a lot of lawyer work coming up. <laughs> And you have booklooks.org. Three is questionable. There's some threes I've left alone, but four and five probably should be moved to the adult. So when you're ordering, just check booklooks.org. It, it, they've done a good job. They really have. I think the threes are questionable, but the fours and the fives are definite. Well, we have another month and a half. Yeah. Well, all right. Okay. That's okay. good. That gives me a lot of good stuff for our press release thing here. I'll get that out. I, I'll try and run this by you, this press release thing before we send it. Okay. 